uh, thank you and good morning. I'm so thrilled to work together with my friend Congressman Scott and Senator Warner and our other colleagues here. You'll hear from uh, Congressman Butterfield right after me and then, uh, and then uh, Congressman Beyer as well in this very important bill, the 400 Years of African American History Commission Act. Why am I so passionate about this bill? When I was the governor of Virginia in 2007, we had a massive celebration around the 400th anniversary of the English contributions to the United States of America, beginning with the settlement of Jamestown in 1607. And it wasn't just a celebration. There was also a federal commission voted on, passed, and funded by Congress that was part of those events to say these contributions are worthy of recognition. As a senator last year in 2015, I played a role in the celebration about 450 years of the Hispanic roots of the United States with the founding of St. Augustine, Florida by the Spaniards in 1565. And I was in St. Augustine in September with the King and Queen of Spain to do that. Again, it wasn't just a celebration. It was a federal commission voted on, passed, and funded by Congress that said the contributions of the Hispanic uh, uh, settlement are worthy of recognition today. Well, if English lives matter, if Latino lives matter, then African American lives matter, and they mattered every day since the landing of those 20 and odd African Americans. That was the phrase that was used in the Bill of Lading at Point Comfort, Virginia in 1619. And that's what this bill is about. Now, the story is a very different story, and it's got a lot of pain associated with it. Not that everything was smooth for the English in Jamestown, not that everything was smooth for the Hispanic settlement in St. Augustine, but this is a unique story because it begins with people captured off a Portuguese slave ship and brought to this nation against their will. And, and those 20 were the beginning of what became millions who were held in slavery and then in second class status. I was thinking about the, what 400 years from 16, 19 means, and I was kind of putting it in my own head this way, there have been eight half centuries in the 400 years, eight half centuries of history. For five of the eight half centuries, the Africans in this country were held in legal, legal slavery. And even freed African Americans during that five-eighths of our history, who were not legally enslaved and treated as chattel rather than people, even freed Afri African Americans were denied the constitutional rights that others had, were denied the rights of the Constitution, denied even being citizens, according to the rationale of the Dred Scott decision. So that was five-eighths of our history. Then two-eighths of our history, from 1865 essentially to 1965, African Americans, though considered citizens now, and not legally enabled to be enslaved, were held in a legally second-class status because separate but equal was the law of the land, whether it was in education, public accommodations, voting, service on juries, etc., for another hundred years. It's only been in the last eighth of our history as a nation, the last eighth of this 400-year period, that African Americans have been entitled to full and complete legal equality. But legal equality is in everything because if you look at the statistics about the wealth differential between Caucasian families and African American families or disparities in the criminal justice system or elsewhere, you will see that there is a long, long way to go. So it's a, it's a story with a lot of pain to it, but it's also a story that has to be told in a way to commemorate that we as a nation, had it not been for 400 years of African Americans, you cannot think of anything, the, the United States would be absolutely unrecognizable and so much poor in so many ways, artistically, entrepreneurially, intellectually, academically, culturally, diplomatically, spiritually, in every plane of who we think of ourselves when we think of Americans. The United States of America, without the contributions and influences of African Americans beginning with that tragic landing at Point Comfort, America would be unrecognizable and much the poorer. And so what we hope to do with this bill, and it's certainly my hope that Congress would respond to it the same way they responded to a bill to recognize the English contributions or the Hispanic contributions, is to engage in something we should do periodically, especially around momentous anniversaries, which is 
tell the story and tell it in a way differently than it might have been told 50 or 100 years ago, taking advantage of the ability to tell it more and more truthfully, just like we hope those who follow after us will tell it even better than we're able to. And that's what this bill is about, and I'm really proud to work together with my colleagues on it.